Back when I made my CLG documentary criticism video, a lot of people told me that they actually learned a lot from it when I mentioned some facts about CLG's experiences in Germany at IEM Cologne. Now, while I'm certainly not an expert on esports or anything, I have been playing League and following its competitive scene for more than two and a half years now, and the more and more I thought about it, the more and more I thought it might be fun to share some facts that I've learned about our competitive scene, at least just for a little fun 100,000 subscriber video. So without further ado, here are eight things that that you may or may not have known about League of Legends esports. I started playing League of Legends back in 2010 when I was mesmerized watching CLG and SK Gaming play in the world cyber games. They were really good games and they were really fun to watch despite some technical issues, but one thing people often forget is there were two other teams representing their countries back then as well. China Hero obviously representing China and another story representing Singapore. Now most of these players have disappeared from the competitive scene, CLG being the obvious exception, but they aren't the only ones who are still around. Two players from another story are actually still playing League of Legends competitively to this very day. Darkness is playing jungle for Singapore Sentinels and has been a major part of esports for quite a while. He was even on Team Zon in the Season 1 Finals, that team that famously got kicked in the ass by Hotshot in Italy GG, while Chawi is also playing for Singapore Sentinels as their AD carry. These names may not mean much in the American or European scene, but it's pretty impressive that these guys have been around LOL esports as long as Reginald or Kobe or Chowster or any of those guys have. Speaking of Chowster, he's actually a really interesting guy who holds a couple of records of his own. Not only is he an incredibly intelligent player, but he's also the only person to play every single role in the game professionally at one point or another, and he's the only player to be undefeated at the World Cyber Games in League of Legends, winning both back in 2010 with CLG and in 2011 with the ragtag NA team Chicks Dig Elo. There have been many teams who have come and gone throughout the history of League of Legends esports, but probably the most interesting is Team Mistral. They've had more former players on their roster than any other team in League of Legends. Not only that, but they're a multi-gaming organization based in France, but unlike many of the other French-based teams like AAA or Millennium, not only is their team not made up of exclusively French players, but none of the 34 previous members they've had have ever been French. While some teams like Fnatic, TSM, and CLG have been around in esports forever, others have been less fortunate and have seemingly disappeared from the competitive scene regardless of their success. Back in the Season 1 championships, the second place medal was taken by the French team against All Authority, who constantly proved their skill beating top tier teams like TSM multiple times. Despite very strong play followed with a very strong finish, almost taking first place, it wasn't long before the individual players ended up leaving the organization and eventually splitting off from each other entirely. They all bummed around different teams for a while, but never ended up coming close to winning another major tournament as a team ever again. Moma, Linak, and Kuja all remain teamless to this very day. And the other two players who still are active are Soaz and Yellowstar, who now play top lane in AD for Fnatic, the very team that beat them back in the Season 1 Finals. CLG is an awesome team, and I love them to death, as is evident by some of my previous videos, but even CLG fans have to admit that it's actually kind of funny that they're this big historic team considering some of their past tournament performances. They've been very successful at many times in their history, but if you ignore all non-premier tournaments, they've only taken first in three events, 2011 MLG Raleigh, IEM Season 4 Cologne, and of course the previously mentioned 2010 World Cyber Games. All great achievements, but it gets a little bit depressing for for CLG fans when they realized that CLG was actually playing with substitutes for both MLG Raleigh and IEM Cologne. If you take that into account, CLG hasn't taken first in a premier tournament with their main lineup ever since those WCG games that took place more than two and a half years ago. It can be rough being a CLG fan sometimes. On a happier note though, Counterlogic Gaming is actually the most star-studded team in League of Legends history. Of the 11 different people who have formerly played under the CLG name not including the current roster, 9 are still very successful and are a part of major tournaments in one way or another. Bloodwater is currently a sub for Team Vulcan, Elements is the coach for Team Coast, the Din brothers are obviously with TSM, Reginald playing mid and Dan Din subbing, Voiboy and St. Vicious are both now with Team Curse, Loco Doko is playing AD for Najin Shield, Lil Balls just won the Season 2 World Championships with Taipei Assassins and is still a substitute for their team, and of course Kobe24 is now a caster for Riot Games. 
Well, there have been teams like SK Gaming, CLG, and Curse who have gone through a decent number of roster changes over the years. There are those like Team Solo Mid who seemingly haven't. The only roster changes there have been in the past two years for TSM have been Dyrus replacing Rain Man top lane and Wild Turtle replacing Chaos at AD. It actually wasn't always like this, though. In fact, Team Solo Mid's five original members were Saint Vicious, Feedfest, Chaos, the Odd One, and Loco Doco, making General Odd One the only remaining original member of TSM on the team today. And finally, while not exactly a part of esports, back in 2010, Riot had the Ionia vs. Noxus showmatch game where average players could send in applications and have a chance of being selected to play for either Ionia or Noxus, and then essentially play out what was currently happening in the lore at the time for various rewards, both personally for them and for the community. It was a really awesome event where the winning team got to choose an item to be implemented into the game, the Ionian Boots of Lucidity. The winning team's champions were also on sale for the following week, and the event was streamed for all to watch. While it wasn't a high-stakes competitive event, it was still fun to see a bunch of fairly high ELO players play against each other for the chance at deciding part of League of Legends history. All sorts of now well-known names participated, including Guardsman Bob, the famous streamer, Frost, who currently works as the lead artist for Counter Logic Gaming, and Roku, who is the founder and manager of the community fan site Runeterra, and currently resides in Diamond One on the North American servers. Well, thank you all very much for listening to my old hipster rambling, and thank you very much for 100k subscribers. I hope you all are enjoying LCS as much as I am right now. There are some good games here at the start of the summer season. I swear, any of you rooting for CLG or Dig should probably make sure you don't have a heart condition or anything. Anyway, though, as always, if you'd like to check out more of my videos, you can go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, a bit of an announcement. Over the next couple of weeks, I'll be streaming League of Legends three to five days a week as I try to climb back up to Platinum at the very least. Maybe I'll even go for Diamond. So you can tune in and watch that if you want to see me fail a bunch in solo queue. That'll be starting soon, and I should have a schedule for you guys up on my Facebook or Twitter. I also actually plan on streaming at least three days a week just from now on in general. So again, if you're interested, my stream link is in the description of all my videos. Until then, though, thank you all very much for watching. Good luck in solo queue, and have a wonderful day.